Hey guys, welcome back to the Gears and Tool channel. And today we are looking at the Leatherman Free T4, another pocket multi-tool from Leatherman. And this is a nice looking multi-tool and um, it's really kind of targeting, in my opinion, the Victoria Knox series of uh, pocket multi-tools that we all grew up with and uh, love using. So let's go ahead and dive into the uh, features of this particular multi-tool and what some of the pros and cons of Leatherman's offering are. So first up is size and weight. We have a 3.65 inch long tool that's one inch wide at the widest point and three quarters of an inch wide at its widest point, which is right here where the lock bar sticks out. So a pretty compact multi-tool considering all the tools that are in it. Also, this package weighs in at 4.3 ounces, which is uh, pretty good. However, it is one ounce heavier than the Letterman T2, which I reviewed previously. So let's go ahead and take a look at the knife on this thing. So it deploys with one hand, which is nice, and it's a 420HC steel blade at uh, two inches long. Leatherman has it listed at 2.2 inches long, but uh, when I measured it, it was closer to two inches. So they're being a little bit uh, generous with their measurements there. But uh, it is a nice blade, super sharp from the factory, just like basically everything Leatherman makes, so no surprises there. Um, kind of a hollow grind with a drop point. I do wish the uh, drop point uh, left a flatter belly on here. Um, because that would make for a little bit better uh, draw cutting with the knife plate. But um, I kind of understand they have to make a little room in the back of the handle here for the pivot of the other tools on the opposite side of the handle. So the blade choice kind of makes sense, but I do prefer a blade where the drop point drops down with a flatter belly. Very serviceable blade overall though. Um, one nice thing about this blade is it's locking. So you just push back on the lock bar to unlock it and fold it in. Um, as far as lockup goes, the side to side motion on this is uh, super solid and up and down also solid. You don't feel any wiggle, you don't feel any concern that's going to collapse on your hand while using it and uh, cuts you. On the topic of using the knife, I've seen some criticism from some people about how blocky um, the handle of this particular multi-tool is. I personally kind of like that. Um, yes, it is a blocky handle and it may not fit some people's hands very well. But for me, let's close it up real quick. If you kind of look, when I hold it, my knuckle kind of naturally creases where the edges of the tool are. So I don't really feel the edges of the handle when I'm using it, even if I'm being aggressive with it. So maybe it's a hand size thing, but I have seen some people kind of compare this to a square block of wood or a brick. Um, and that being a little bit of a downside with the edges that, um, are not sharp, but they're not exactly rounded off either. But in my experience using this, it's been pretty comfortable for me. On the same side of the handle as the knife blade, we have two additional tools. One is the uh, medium screwdriver slash pry bar that also happens to have a uh, box cutter in it, which I actually kind of like this feature. I, um, if you're trying to open things like uh, bags of cement, bags of sand, um, things like that, you can use this to quickly tear open the plastic bagging without damaging your primary knife on this tool. So I actually think this is a very useful tool, uh, one that I use quite a bit. And then the other tool on this side of the handle, I can't say the same for. So this is the uh, file for this tool that comes down to a mini screwdriver tip. And I don't care for this tool in this pocket multi-tool for a couple of reasons. First of all, the file is just short. I mean, it's not super useful. It might be for, you know, a quick uh, taking the edge off uh, something that you broke, but uh, as far as actually using it as a, a tool to make something, not super useful. Also, there's no diamond coating on either side of this file, just like the Leatherman P4's file. Um, that's a big bummer for me because some of Leatherman's other multi-tools like the Leatherman Wave here do have a diamond coated file, which uh, I find myself using quite a bit and it works really well for touching up knife blades and stuff like that. Um, also, I have the Leatherman Wave here just for size comparison. You can see how much smaller that file is compared to the Leatherman Wave. So pretty small file. I, uh, I probably would have preferred that they put a serrated edge knife blade on this side of the handle to complement the plain edge knife blade in here. But they chose to go with the file. Um, another thing I don't really like about having a file on this particular tool is there's magnets in here. So one of the ways this tool operates one-handed is uh, there's magnets that kind of keep these tools captured so they don't shake loose, but then they're quickly deployable when you push on the back of them. So if there's magnets in here and you're using the file, you're gonna have uh, little bits of metal drop into your tool and get possibly stuck gunking up the mechanisms or just getting sharp pieces of metal on the outside of the multi-tool, which is less than ideal. So that's it for the knife side of the tool. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other side of the tool. Again, one-handed. We have three tools on this side. We have a number one and number two Phillips driver, 
with a bottle opener or cap lifter, which works great by the way. Also, while we're on the topic, the secondary tools also lock up just like the knife blade does, which is great because if you're using something like this Phillips driver, you don't want it to accidentally fold in on your hand, pinching your finger. So I do like that touch that not just the primary knife blade, but the secondary tools lock up as well. And that's something that the Victorian Knox tools just don't do. Back to the screwdriver side, we have uh, an awl and a pair of scissors. The awl is uh, just fine. It has a micro screwdriver tip on it and uh, a reasonably sharp edge on the awl, not razor sharp, but plenty sharp to be drilling holes through wood or leather. I personally don't really use an awl for that. I use it for scraping paint out of the nooks and crannies of whatever I'm working on. And the last tool on the side are the scissors. And I think this is something that a lot of people uh, might be kind of excited about. I know a lot of you guys really like scissors on their multi-tools. I personally don't use scissors that much for my multi-tools. I figure if I'm gonna you know, be cutting something, I'd just use a knife, but I know everybody's use case is different, so let's take a look at the scissors. Um, they come out pretty easily. Um, they have a really nice snick to them. They, um, they feel really tight and secure. So let's go ahead and cut some paracord with these scissors. Um, kind of my version of the uh, miniature scissors torture test because some scissors do really well with it and some just fall on their face. So we got some 550 cord. And first cut's pretty good. Let's go ahead and try a loose end cut. As you can see, the uh, paracord is folding over a little bit as the scissors try to snip through. Let's try another location here. So if I hold my fingers really close to the uh, cutting line, it seems to do uh, quite a bit better. Um, but that case, um, but like right here, it's still struggling a little bit. And the scissors jammed again. So I'm gonna say these are okay scissors. They, uh, we'll cut paracord, but I wouldn't say they're top-notch scissors like the Leatherman Surge, for example, which cuts paracord every time. That being said, these are a lot thinner than the Leatherman Surge scissors, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Again, I call paracord the mini scissors torture test for a reason. A lot of them struggle with it. Um, these scissors feel nice and tight. Overall, I think they're going to do great with paper, cardstock, uh, cutting tape, things like that. So, um, definitely not a worthless pair of scissors, but do be realistic on what the capabilities of them are. I love that this multi-tool has a pocket clip included. Leatherman, please take the hint. Giving us things like this where you are teasing us about a pocket clip is a slap in the face. You pay a bunch of money, do not get the full capability of the tool. So I love that the T4 does come with a pocket clip and that's my preferred method of carry. I really like that all the tools are one hand deployable and all the tools are locking, not just the knife blade. And all the locking tools lock up nicely side to side and up and down. I really do like the locking mechanism on all Leatherman 3 Series tools. So uh, great job there. And the form factor is a big win. I think it's uh, kind of that sweet spot where it's not a huge pair of pliers, but you have a nice solid knife when you need it and a couple other tools for when you need it, just like the tried and true Victorian Knox pocket multi-tools. Now for a couple of the cons of this tool. This tool is a little pricey coming in at $60. While it is an upgrade from some of the uh, Victorian Knox tools coming in at $20 or $25, I really think something closer to $40 would be appropriate for this tool. It's pretty well executed, but it's not perfect. So again, $40 would be the price point I would be looking for this tool. It's a little bit blocky. Um, I think for some people, that's gonna be a turnoff. For me, it, it just happens to kind of fit my hand. Again, the, uh, the real squared off edges and stuff uh, kind of line up with the uh, creases on my knuckle. So I don't find this tool to be uncomfortable to use. And I think many of you uh, with similar sized hands will also find this to be true. For some people, it's probably gonna be a very uncomfortable tool. It is uh, very blocky. Now the edges aren't necessarily sharp. They have a slight radius to them, but um, the overall shape I mean, it's it's pretty squared off. So, you know, just just be concerned if you have sensitive hands or your hands aren't uh, kind of medium to large, maybe they're extra small or extra large, uh, this might not be the right tool for you. And now we come to probably the biggest con of this tool is this thing has the worst file ever. I hate this file. I know that they've used this on almost all of their free series tools uh, from their larger P4, P2 versions all the way down to these pocket tools. I don't like that it's not diamond coated. I don't like that it's super short. I don't like that it's tapered. It's just, in my opinion, it's not a very useful file. I mean, it might work for, you know, filing your nails and that's about it. I would prefer that you don't put it in there at all and give me a serrated edge blade to complement the straight edge blade that comes on here. So just my two cents. And the final con that I have for this tool is that there are magnets on each end of the tool. The reason the tools don't just shake out is because they're retained by magnets. And while that gives you kind of a nice slick one hand deployment, you just push on the back and they pop right out because there's not a mechanical lock, it's just magnetic. Um, it does have the potential to magnetize these tools. And also 
if you're working with, uh, you know, filing something, um, metal shavings from drill bits or uh, a hacksaw, stuff like that, um, you're gonna have potential to get metal shavings kind of stuck in here against the magnets, gumming up your tool, or just dragging metal shavings around where you don't really want them. So overall, that's my takeaway on this multi-tool, guys. Basically, get rid of the file, add a serrated blade, keep the pocket clip and uh, drop the price. But uh, overall, I really like the form factor. I think Leatherman's really onto something here. They just need to keep working on this design a little bit. Oh, and one last thing, in the back of the handle, there's tweezers. I didn't actually forget. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button below. It helps the channel out a lot. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're first to be notified when I release new videos just like this one. Cheers.